Thank you, Dr. Ghosh. A very good afternoon to all the attendees of this webinar, which is being organized by the West Bengal chapter of API. I bring warm greetings from SMS Medical College, where I work and the famous pink city of Jaipur. At the outset, I wish to express my gratitude to Dr. Jyoti Moy, Dr. Karmakar, Dr. Ghosh, and other members of the scientific committee of API West Bengal chapter for inviting me and for giving me this opportunity to interact with all of you. We are all familiar with complete blood count, CBC, but we are too also ignorant of the wealth of information which is contained in this simple test. Today, I will focus on one such parameter of CBC, which is red cell distribution with RDW. This parameter is not a new one. In 1983, Bestman recognized the importance of this parameter in diagnosis of anemia and published a beautiful manuscript in the American Journal of Pathology. Unfortunately, this parameter remained unrecognized till few years back. RDW and the RBC histogram are two faces of the same coin and both complement each other in the diagnosis of hematological diseases. Therefore, I will be discussing both of them together. We all know that CBC is one of the most frequently ordered tests by a clinician. It is also one of the most info informative single investigations. It gives you the provides a window into the functional status of bone marrow and gives you the idea about the direct or indirect evidence of health and disease of various organ systems. It has uh, uh, crossed a long journey from the manual uh, uh, new bar chamber counting from uh, estimation of hemoglobin by Sally's method to the new generation cell counters, which fetches around 55 numerical parameters. Now this is a printout from a cell counter, uh, which almost there are 33 numerical parameters are there related to RBC. Site, then you can yeah. now what is red cell distribution with RDW? Basically, we are all aware of the pathologist report on peripheral smear that is an isocytosis, which means variation in red cell size. Now, this RDW it gives you an objective measure of this variation in red cell size. Whatever what was being reported on peripheral smear was simply a, a subjective in impression. Now, this W can be expressed as coefficient of variation, that is CV, or as standard of deviation RDWSD. Yeah, RDSD, am I audible, please? Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah. I would okay. everyone to please mute themselves, other than the speaker. Okay. RDWCV is a rate of standard deviation of the distribution width, which is divided by the mean red cell volume. And this parameter is very sensitive to the appearance of microcytes. On the other hand, RDWSD, which is the actual distribution width of the RBC population at 25-20% above the x-axis on the RBC histogram. And this RDWSD is sensitive to the appearance of macrocytes. Usually in medical literature, we see that the values have either normal, less, or increased values, but they practically no disorder which has abnormally low RDW values. Now this RDW is not simply an expression of the homogeneity of the RBC population. If there is large RDB, RDW, it means there is a wide variation in the RBC diameters within the test pool. It does not say that the cells are large or small. It is simply that the population either homogeneous or it is heterogeneous. Younger cells are larger, that is the reticulocytes are larger, and therefore they shift their RDW towards the right side of the histogram. And the older and the beaten up cells, they are since they're smaller, they add to the left hand side of the histogram. So coming to RDW, it is calculated by the formula and is, is approximately the width of the histogram at 68% above the baseline. Whereas RDW, as we have told you, is the width of the hist RBC histogram at 20% above the baseline. Now, 
we are learning about the classification of anemia according to mcv value microcytic normocytic or macrocytic or on the etiologic classification but both these classifications are not optimal for clinicians we need a classification by which a clinician can make a provisional diagnosis at bedside so depending upon the value of mcv which is can be either low normal or high and depending upon rdw which is either normal or high we have six groups of uh, anemias which have been classified in this classification now to summarize this classification the hyperpolyphyletic disorders independent of the value of mcv have normal rdw nutritional disorders independent of mcv have increased rdw that is they are more heterogeneous group a population of bcs hemolytic disorders independent of mcv have heterogeneity which increases in proportion to the severity of anemia now i would just interpret some of the cbc reports in context of rdw and rbc histogram now this is a cbc uh, his, uh, report of a 50 year old man which has marked anemia hemoglobin 6.8 you can see the blood indices rbc indices microcytic hypochromic picture is there if you if you look at the uh, rbc histogram it is skewed to the left with low mcv rdw is cv is high 20.5 uh, the rest of the uh, the RBCs, WBCs, and the platelet histograms are normal. So this is a patient who has microcytic anemia with high RDW. Now, if you go into the classification uh, of uh, the anemia based on MCV and RDW, this patient had MCV low, RDW is high, and the commonest cause of this category of anemia is iron deficiency anemia. Other causes are double heterozygous thalassemia and hemoglobin H. So coming back to the CBC of this report, this was a patient of iron deficiency anemia, which was confirmed by iron studies. And this patient had occult blood positive in the stool, which accounted for iron deficiency anemia. This is a CBC report of an 18 year old female. She was admitted for abortion. Uh, if you can focus on the uh, the RBC, uh, uh, the CBC report, uh, the hemoglobin is 11.5, but TRBC is 6.99. MCV is quite low, 59.1 femtoliter, and there is hypochromia with normal RDW. Now, if you focus on the RBC histogram, uh, it shows a necro um, microcytic curve, which peaks at around 55 femtoliter. Now, if you consider the family history and the norm, the red cell, red cell distribution width along with microcytosis, she is a case of uh, non-anemic heterozygous thalassemia. That is, commonest cause is beta thalassemia trait in a country. MCV is low, RDW is normal. Also, if you focus uh, on the CBC parameter, that the hemoglobin level is out of disproportionate to MC value. The TRBC is disproportionate to the TR, uh, hemoglobin value as well to MCV value. Of course, there are so many indices are there. The most common is the Benzer index. But looking simply at the MCV, uh, CBC report and the histogram, you can make a confirmative diagnosis of beta thalassemia trait at bedside, which can be confirmed by HPLC. Now, this is a CBC report of a young male with mild ictus and moderate anemia, hemoglobin 8.2. You can see MCV is quite high, 113. RDW is, uh, SD is 119.4. The whole histogram has shifted to the right side. And you can see a big subpopulation of RVCs, which are in the range of 150 to 200 femtoliter with almost, uh, they have a, mean MCV value of this subpopulation of RBC around 170. Now, this is a patient in a classification fits into high MCV with high RW, and the commonest cause is megaloblastic anemia because of folate or vitamin deficiency. There are other causes like sickle cell disease, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, or cold agglutin disease. Now, this is a histogram of uh, CBC report of a boy with purpura, mark pillar, and fever. You can see there is pancytopenia, the 
RBC histogram has been skewed, has shifted to the right. RDW is normal, MCV is high. And if you look at the uh, WBC histogram there, only you have a neutral, uh, what you call lymphocyte peak is there. There is practically no neutrophil dome is there. The platelet histogram is abnormal. There is no descending slip. And if you go, uh, go to the classification that this patient had high MCV value with normal RDW fits into a classification of aplastic anemia, which of course has to be confirmed by bone marrow examination. Now, coming back to the two common causes of anemia in a country, iron deficiency and megaloblastic anemia. We all know that iron deficiency anemia, when it starts, the first indication as far as the RDW and as uh, the species is concerned is the increase in RDW. That is, there's increase in end isocytosis. But RDW is, gives you an objective numerical parameter. and isocytosis which is reported by the pathologist, it usually is it usually not much attention is paid by the clinicians. The second uh, stage in iron deficiency anemia is appearance of microcytosis and third is hyperchromia. Now when microcytosis and hyperchromia sets in, diagnosis has become easy. But for clinicians it is very important that we should catch iron deficiency anemia in its very early stage. So when there's an early iron deficiency, all the RBC indices are normal, except RDW is slightly high. And if you look at the normal histogram, which is filled by the, the RBCs, the, this histogram of the patient has, is slightly broadened towards the left side, that is towards the microcystic side. So only looking at the RDW and the histogram, you can make an early diagnosis of RNA deficiency. There is no other way, but on clinically on bedside that you can make a diagnosis of early iron deficiency. Now, when the iron deficiency becomes more advanced, we know that there is a fall in all the RBC parameters, hemoglobin falls, the histogram, it shifts towards the left side, it is broadened. The important thing is that at this point of time, the diagnosis can be easily made by any pathologist and clinician. If you look at the uh, the peripheral smear, you can find microcytic hyperchromic RBCs. But the importance of diagnosing iron deficiency early is that you can prevent development of advanced iron deficiency. Now, when you treat these patients with parenteral iron, what is, how, how do, do they respond? Now, this histogram, it shows you a normal response when you treat these patients with parenteral iron. There is a small peak uh, of the histogram on the left right side of the histogram and which lies in the normocytic range. This is normocytic response, which is a normal physiological response to parenteral iron. But now look at this. This is a bimodal RBC histogram, quite different from the previous histogram. Here you have a uh, another wave, uh, another peak, uh, which falls in the macrocytic range. And the MCB is around, say, approximately 117 to 20 femtoliter. Now, this is the macrocytic response. When you have this response, it means there is unmasking of the underlying folic acid or B12 deficiency. Quite often what happens when you treat iron deficiency anemia with parental iron, this response, after a few weeks, they come back that their hemoglobin has fallen. The reason is that these patients have combined nutritional deficiency, either folic acid or B12. They are the borderline. And when there is accelerated erythropoiesis because of parental iron, what happens? The, these patients, they go into frank deficiency of folic acid or B12. And this type of histogram appears. So simply looking at the histogram, you can make a diagnosis of that this patient has unmasking of B12 or folate deficiency. So an iron deficiency anemia, the histogram looks like what is in the early iron deficiency to the advanced one and to the recovery, which could be a normocytic that is normal or could be a macrocytic response, which suggests unmasking of B12 or folic acid deficiency. Now coming to another common uh, cause of anemia in a country, megaloblastic anemia. Now, like in iron, early iron deficiency, this you can from the blood indices, it is very difficult to make out diagnose early megaloblastic anemia. It's only that the RDW is increased and the histogram is slightly widened towards the right side. This is the even at this point, are the peripheral smear will not tell you much. 
So looking at the blood indices, RBC indices, along with RDW, and looking at the histogram, you can make a diagnosis of early megaloblastic anemia. However, when the anemia becomes quite frank, you find hypersegmented neutrophils are there. The uh, the RBC histogram has shifted towards the right side. All the RBC indices are in concurrence with the diagnosis of advanced megaloblastic anemia. Now, like iron deficiency anemia, there can be two types of recovery. Now, if you supplement these patients with either folate or B12, there could be a normocytic response where you have normocytic response where you can have a smaller curve towards the left side of the histogram, which is in the normocytic range. This is a normal response. But if you have a response which occurs in the microcytic range, it means there's unmasking of iron deficiency anemia. So when you treat these patients, they initially they respond for a few days and weeks, and they again come back with fallen hemoglobin. And this time RDW is much increased because you have big two populations of RBCs, microcytic, as well as normocytic and few macrocytic. And these are the patients who have developed iron deficiency superimposed on treatment of B12 or folic acid supplementation. Now, if time permits, can I continue for one and a half minutes more? Uh, we are actually just uh, we have to uh, close it soon, so come to the conclusion. Can I continue, please? Yeah, yeah. You please come to the okay. carry on messages now. Okay, yeah. Now, this is a histogram of chronic anemia of chronic disease. We all know that it resembles exactly the normal histogram of a normal person. Now, except for the hemoglobin, hematocrit, and TRBC, all the blood parameters, CBC parameters are normal, histogram is normal. When you have a situation like this, histogram looks like normal, except for the hemoglobin, hematocrit, and TRBC, all of the parameters are normal. This is a diagnosis of anemia of chronic disease. And this is a very, very good, simplest way to diagnose bedside. Now, when, whenever you see patients, you treat patients of megaloblastic anemia, you find a lot of RBC fragmentations on the periphery smear. Now, if you find a plateau towards the left side of the RBC histogram, uh, if you can see the histogram here on the circle, this is suggestive of fragmented RBCs. And this is pathognomonic of fragmented RBC, presence of fragmented RBCs. Now, if in this situation, when there is a fragmentation, what happens? The RDW increases because of the widening of the histogram. Yeah. Um, this is the only direct indicator to the clinician. Yes, there is fragmentation. And we all know that the common causes of RBC fragmentation includes cardiac processes, sickle cell disease, TTPHUS, DIC, megaloblastic anemia, burns, and so on. Now, this is a histogram of uh, in a patient of autoimmune hemolytic anemia. You can see because of this reticulocytosis, MCV is 132. It is just resembles like of megaloblastic anemia. But remember, in megaloblastic anemia, the reticulocytosis is only mild and it does not affect MCV in RDW. But in autoimmune hemolytic anemia, it markedly affects both MCV as well as RDW. Now, this is how when the hemolytic and when you treat uh, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, they, as they recover, what happens? There is always a single peak. As contrast to megaloblastic anemia, there is only a single peak when there's a recovery. I think I'll I'll just take one. This this is very important, diamorphic anemia. Now, if you look at the parameter, it appears to be a normocytic anemia. But if you look at the histogram, you can see both microcytes and macrocytes. It is only the histogram which will help you to diagnose my dimorphic anemia. I think I'll skip uh, the rest of the time. So the radio message is that RDW and RBC histogram has added new dimension to the screening of RBCs, have given us a classification which is useful for clinicians at that side. It is of great importance in the de detection of early iron deficiency in megaloblastic anemia when all other indices are normal. And remember, just simply looking at histograms can give you a clue to diagnosis. Thank you very much.